skiing. That reminds me. Or is it yet another sailor's yarn? My son and his wife are off again on yet another holiday. This time they are skiing in the Alps. This somehow jogged another memory from my past, not only as us sailors are wont to say to swing the lamp, but to remind myself why I was put off skiing for life. It was the mid-1950s and at the height of the Cold War. I was a midshipman in the Royal Navy at HMS Vernon, the Navy Diving School in Portsmouth, being taught underwater demolition. That sets the scene, a sailor, a diver, having recently qualified as a rifle marksman at HMS Phoenix. It's all a long, long while ago, but as far as I can remember, the only thing I ever volunteered for was for a diving course. Someone had earmarked me for a special forces beasting, and I found myself at a special school for mushrooms where you, they keep you in the dark and keep throwing manure at you. Thus, 12 specially selected hairy arsed animals consisting of five members of the Royal Navy and seven Royal Marines found ourselves on parade on the square at Royal Naval Barracks Portsmouth, also known as HMS Victory. The buzz going round the other residents were that we were in training for the field gun competition. If anyone believed that, they surely must have been puzzled as to why we wore all-in-one white hooded alpine ski suits and why we were spending hours on the polished black tarmac of the parade ground being taught how to turn while wearing telemark cross-country skis without standing on the inside ski and tripping over. My wife often berates me for swearing like a sailor. I tell her that's because I am an effing sailor. I now realise that that was the very point where I honed my colourful language skills. I learned that our training course had been the brainchild of Lieutenant Colonel Blondie Hasler, DSO, OBE, that famous nutcase who led the suicidal Cockleshell Heroes raid on Bordeaux in World War II. We found ourselves being landed from a naval frigate in a Norwegian fjord before daylight and in a snowstorm. We were dressed in white hooded onesies, carrying a 56-pound Bergen rucksack and a Lee-Enfield rifle, and on cross-country skis. We were to climb up to a high-level route and ski 50 kilometres into the town of Bergen, to meet the very frigate that we had just left. Yes, that makes sense in this man's navy. Expletive deleted, Blondie Hasler and his bloody stupid ideas. The long, boring slog was enough to make a lifetime vow that I would never, ever don a set of skis again. We did, however, have a highlight during the high-level routine. When we sheltered in some rocks just below the tree line for a smoko. Our major, Royal Marines, no names, no pack drill, disappeared for a call of nature. And after a few minutes, we were alerted by some very, very loud, very, very colourful language from the major. It appeared that he'd pulled down his hooded onesie to squat behind a rock and promptly dumped in his hood. A fact he didn't realise until he'd finished pulling up his suit and then flicked the hood over his head. Well, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Nasty. Trust me, the last place to suffer such an indignity is in front of such a crew. As the Major insisted before we left, there are no ranks here, no salutes and no sirs. You may call me boss. So it was Christ boss. I think we may be in the shit here. Hey, boss. Do we all have to black up? Something in the state of Denmark stinks, or are we in Norway? Is that why latrines are called heads in the Navy? Boss, can you give us a heads up on the route? And so began the start of six months of hard specialist training in the Arctic warfare. Snow, mountains, ice, more snow, all of which sent me in good stead for the rest of my service in Malaya, Suez, Aden, Lebanon, Ceylon and Cyprus. In other words, 
excuse my Latin, prefer et abdura dolor hit tibi prodorit olim. I did apologise for my Latin before I said it. The pronouncement, but it roughly means be patient and tough. Someday the pain will be useful to you. And only a bloody daft sailor could believe that.